Squeak chair squeaking as well now. What is going on? Today! What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob and welcome back to a brand new episode of my cheap versus expensive YouTube series. I don't know why I'm doing that. Ah! <laughs> I'm so immature. Ah. This is the series where I take two art supplies of a similar category, put them up against each other and see which one is worth it at their prices. Now in today's episode, I have a super special treat for you and that is the Children's Felt Tip Markers by Faber-Castell. And I hopefully by the end of this video will convince you to stop buying your children these. There are several reasons why and we'll go into those during the video. But they are very cheap, coming in at 20 cents per marker, so that's $10 for 50 markers. And that sounds incredible. It sounds out of this world, but there is a reason these things are so cheap. And that's what we're gonna find out during this video. But these markers are gonna be going up against the newest addition to the ADC Art Attack family. Ohuhu markers. It's a funny name. Inside this bag, contained within Nya space, we have Ohuhu branded markers, the brush pens. Let's take a little look at them. How do I do this? That was clean. Look at these. These are beautiful. These markers right here have taken the art world by storm. They come in at around 50 cents to $1 per marker, depending on where you live, and they come in a variety of packs. Now this is the 80 pack because I wasn't aware there was a 100 pack, so there's not many in there, but there is a lot. So we can do a lot with these. So we're gonna do, so we're gonna, I've been trying like 10 times to just say this word. So we're gonna jump right into this video right now, unboxing these pens, seeing what we've got inside them, giving them a little bit of a test, and then using them side by side on a piece of artwork we'll be choosing as I start. And I would like to quickly apologize for the lateness of this episode. I know a lot of people do like this series and I'm sorry that I have put it off for a while, but we are back with our cheap versus expensive series and we do have a very special item. Yeah, it cost me a lot of money to buy them. Coming up real soon. Let's get started. <laughs> um, oh gosh. It doesn't go all the way out the back. Okay, um. Oh. Ooh. Now, just like all my other episodes, I'm gonna do a little test with these before we get started with the piece. So I'm gonna move these to the side and then grab, oh gosh, I love picking them up. Whoa, <laughs> that's so cool. Can you do both at the same time? Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna move them to the side, get ourselves a nice sheet of paper, and give them a little test. So yeah, let me do that. Now we're gonna give them a go and see just, whoa, let's have a look at them. Oh, oh but that worked. <laughs> so when you actually get your hands on with these, they look pretty cool, they're very simplistic in design, but they feel super smooth and quite fragile to be honest. Very light, there is absolutely no weight to these at all. But let's take the cap off and have a look at what we've got inside. To be fair, a really nice looking nib, but looks can be deceiving. Let's see how it works on the paper. With the individual lines, it feels really smooth, really nice to use. Single layers are really nice, but when we double back over, you can really feel that resistance of the paper, but two layers seems pretty good. I think if we go for a third, oh, you can really feel, it starts to feel like tissue. It feels really, really weak. It does damage the paper, but that looks actually really nice. Now, usually you would give some, oh gosh, it's damaging the paper. You would usually give some drying time to it, but as you can see right here, it's already blending into it very well naturally by itself with all of the water content of these pens. So that's pretty good. Now, I probably don't need to give much of an introduction to the Ohuhu art markers. They are absolutely fantastic pens, great value for money. So what we're gonna do right now is jump right into the video of comparing the cheap Faber-Castell markers to the a little bit more pricier Ohuhu art markers, but I would say the cheapest professional grade markers out on the market today. Okay, so before we actually get started with doing the sort of coloring thingy stuff, um, we need something on the paper that we can color in. So who are we gonna choose today? Sonic. Yeah. I do a lot of superheroes on this channel, but I rarely ever get to do Sonic the Hedgehog. And I've done him a few times, but he's like my favorite character of all time. So we're gonna do Sonic right now. Now this particular image of Sonic the Hedgehog that I have chosen today comes off the back of one of my redraw episodes where I did one of my original things from like way back when I was just a wee young man. I got older and then I redrew it. So I'm gonna do that redrawing, but I'm gonna cut it in half and flip it twice. If you're wondering, I'm using a standard fineliner from Windsor & Newton. And with that being said, Sonic, he's done. Doesn't look too bad. Let's get on with coloring him. And I think we're gonna start with Faber-Castell. Let's go. All right, so cheap felt tip markers by Faber-Castell. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me just start by saying, I used to use these when I was a kid. You know, everyone used 
felt tip markers, and they're great. They can be useful sometimes. I, I don't. Uh, I don't know about this. The moment you put these on the paper, you are immediately sucked back into your childhood, and it brings back those memories of just how uh, these things are. They are really difficult to work with. They feel super scratchy, which isn't nice. It's 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 kind of like scratchy. Yeah. It's just not nice. And also, there's like these flaky things. I, I don't know what this is. It's just destroying the paper. I mean, look at these things. What is, what is that? Stop growing on my pen. Go away. I should say that the paper I'm using today is standard cartridge paper. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to be a accessible paper type and just something that's a real world experience of using these. One's a water-based marker and one's an alcohol-based marker. So this is kind of neutral ground, I think. I'd tell you what, one good thing about these pens is their color range though. The colors are really nice and vibrant and I didn't have any difficulty picking colors that I needed. So I could just grab whatever I needed at any point in time and I was just straight onto it. No practice, nothing, just bam. I didn't do any practice runs before this except for that little scribble you saw me doing at the beginning. And the reason I don't do practices is because I want the product itself to kind of dictate what it wants me to do with it. And these pens certainly suit that sort of high vibrant contrast type product thing from like the old days. But you know what I mean? That kind of arcade type style. The blending on these things was super easy as well. I mean, the moment you touched the shadow layer down on top of the base layer, it was just like, wee, and it blended right into it. And it was nice like that. The only problem is you couldn't really push it in with the pen because it would rip the paper and that's no fun. All in all though, there's not much you can say about these pens because they're just, bad. <laughs> nah, I mean, the results don't look too bad. I like the results. I actually really like it a lot. I like the messy, gritty style, so it suits my taste. So despite all of the problems that these pens have, it does create a work of art that I enjoy. So maybe they're good pens for me, but maybe not for you. It depends on your style and your taste. Moving on. So the Ohuhu markers. Now I've used them in the past and I do actually use them now, today, like, well, here as well. But at the same time, other times. <laughs> that made no sense. These are one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, brush markers on the market right now in terms of alcohol markers. And they are so good. You would never believe just how cheap they are compared to other brands. The moment you put these down on this paper, and maybe it's because I just came off the back of using those paper castells, but the moment you put these on the paper, it's just like euphoria. It feels so nice. They're so smooth, and it probably has something to do with the fact that they are a brush tip, but I will say the ink flow on these is super quick, which actually causes me to bleed out of the lines a couple of times at the beginning. That's just because I'm not used to using them right now because I've been using the other stuff. So cut me some slack. I'll get used to them as we go through this piece. The colors are certainly nowhere near as bright and as vibrant as the things. And that can be a positive or a negative from a certain point of view. Obi-Wan. There is a time and a place that you want those bright, vibrant colors, but also you want that sort of natural, neutral looking color. You want something that looks real. And I think they do that. The blending of these was actually very nice, very clean, very easy to do, except for layering the base layer on top of itself. Using the same color on top of itself, I did notice there was a very harsh difference between the two. That was the only issue. But the rest of them, the rest of the colors, the rest of the gradients bleeding into each other was just super easy. I didn't actually have to do any work beyond just stroking them over. <sighs> beyond just placing them over each other. I really gotta choose my words carefully in case someone makes an out of context video because that would, That'd be awkward. Much like the Faber-Castells, they have a wide variety of colors. Now, I only have the 80 marker set. Apparently there is a 100 marker set as well, or 120, I'm not sure, but there is a lot more markers to this. So if you did want to get more colors than you already have, there's an option there for you, but I don't see much problems with the collection that I have, except for a lack of brown. There isn't really any browns in here, which could be useful when doing, say, the shoes, when I want to do some shadows. But other than that, I mean, the greys look pretty good as well. The greys are fantastic in this set. Really do like them. And there you have it, everyone. A Sonic the Hedgehog drawn with Faber-Castell and Ohuhu markers. Now, each of the sides are very, very different. Looking at them side by side, there are some major differences between the two of them that I probably don't need to point out. But there is something that I want to do today that I haven't done in previous videos, and that is I want to list a couple of positives and negatives for each of the sides to really simplify the differences between these products. So starting with the Faber-Castells, and I want to start with the positives. They are super bright. They're very vibrant. They are extremely cheap and readily available. You can find these pens in any store, so really pretty accessible to most people. And they have a great selection of colors. However, there are a few negatives to these pens which can drive you crazy. 
One of the big ones being they just feel awful. They feel super scratchy on the paper and it's quite distracting. Speaking of distractions, they peel the paper off. And this does happen across many types of papers. I have tried these in the past, so I do know. But if you do want to counteract that, you want to get yourself a smooth, thick paper, something like Bristol board, and you'll do pretty okay with these. They also have very inconsistent ink flows. It could be too fast, it could be too slow, but in any case, it is not manageable. And that is a major concern. Jumping over to the Ohuhu markers, and starting with the positives, they have extremely smooth layering, and their blending is just really spot on. It's really quite perfect. Just like the Faber-Castells, they have a very wide variety of colors and they do come in multi-packs so you can pick which size packs you want. They are also super cheap when it comes to alcohol markers. In fact, these are one of the cheapest alcohol markers on the market and I would highly recommend giving them a go. But there are some negatives to these pens. One of the biggest ones is the reflective glare at certain angles. And this usually applies to the darker colors, but it is noticeable and it is quite annoying. Also, the caps tend to not match the colors. This is a huge issue. I would have to recommend that if you do get these, get yourself a separate sheet of paper at all times and always test the color before you use it. Overall, I would recommend that you go for the Ohuhu markers over the felt tip marker pens. Now, yes, the Ohuhu markers do carry a little bit more of a price tag to them, but what you're getting for your money is so much more superior than what you are given for the Faber-Castell markers. And to the parents out there, for those of you trying to push your children or get your children into artwork, they will lose focus and they will lose attention to artwork if you keep supplying them supplies that offer too low of a ceiling. I truly believe that in order to keep your child entertained and interested in artwork, they need supplies that encourage them to go further beyond and push them further. And this goes for adults too. Anyone aspiring to become an artist, I really do think that you should start off with the Ohuhu Alcon markers. You won't regret your purchase of them, you will love them, you will progress with your artwork, and you will continue to progress and see progression as you use them more and more. This is something missing with the felt tip pens. I don't see there is enough progression to be made with them. There is a ceiling on them, and I just don't think it's really possible to break through that ceiling and go even further beyond. It's a very niche style, and you are limited in what you can do with those markers. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The video is complete. What did you think about the video? I do hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I was speaking so much in this and if I was speaking too fast, I do apologize for that. I am trying my best to slow down my speaking, but it's just the way I talk. From myself, from Bob and the little ducklings, we will see you all again in the next video. Take care, be safe and enjoy creating new works of art with your new markers. I feel like I've been paid by Ohuhu. Hey guys, look, if you want to pay me, just message me. Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.